push for that to happen. Yeah. Right? If I didn't, if I didn't believe, first of all, if I didn't believe in a redemptive power of life, there's something in my own life. Yeah, well, keep your weight, though. Yeah. Everybody got to touch their weight. Yeah, that's always like, actually freezing in here. Yeah. 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 Test one two, test one two three four. This is a test for the cafeteria. <laughs> test one two three four. <laughs> one two three four. Test one two. Alright, I'm gonna do the countdown again. Test one two. Test.
test one two. Test one two.
Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Test 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 one, two. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jamani Williams. I chair the Committee on Housing and Buildings. I'm joined today by Council Members Rosenthal, Torres, Cornegy, Ulrich, Salamanca, and Rodenchik. The first bill proposed intro number, thank you, 934A, sponsored by Council Member Levin, is part of the Stanford Tenant Safety Package of legislation, which is 
which this council passed over the summer and would create a real-time enforcement unit in the Department of Buildings to monitor work in occupied building, mul in occupied multiple dwellings. The next two bills, intro number 1359A, sponsored by Council Member 11, and proposed intro number 1366A, sponsored by myself, will require the Department of Housing Preservation and Development to audit buildings receiving 421A benefits for compliance with all applicable affordability and rent registration requirements. Everybody who has been following the 421A and the new debacle that the governor pushed forward knows how important it is that we make sure that those who are getting that money are at least complying with the minimal amount of affordability that they require. The last bill before us today, proposed intro number 1447, is sponsored by myself and Council Member Menchaca. We heard this bill back in January, and since then we have solicited, solicited solicited feedback from numerous stakeholders and have amended the, amended the bill three times in response to the feedback we have received. Proposed intro number 1447C would establish site safety training requirements for workers at certain construction sites. Such workers will be required to receive between 40 and 55 hours of training, the content of which will be determined by DOB, the content of which for the last 10 to 25 will be determined by DOB. The bill would also create a task force which will include representatives of the construction industry, minority and women-owned businesses, and day laborers who will make recommendations regarding the content of the training. The training requires to will be, the training requirements will be phased in over time with the full training being required at the latest by September 1st, 2020. Additionally, this bill would, among other things, create a program to provide training to individuals who do not have equal access, create civil penalties for violations of the training requirements, and require DOB to report such violations. But I do want to make uh, some additional comments. But I know there is a lot of consternation and angst about this particular bill. Uh, I know there's been some confusion. I will say that we're not going to be taking public uh, testimony before we do the vote. So I want to explain more fully what is in the bill. So my commitment when we passed the bill was that uh, this would create a minimum number of hours that most people felt was needed, and I would make sure that this is not a bill that creates any part of the industry to be union only, and that there will be a pathway for union and non-union folks. I think we have, I know we have achieved those goals that I set forward, uh, not in any um, generic way, in a very, very real way. <clears throat> We listen to all of the feedback that we've gotten uh, from all of the stakeholders and all of the voices, and this bill is very much different than the original bill. I said at the beginning the original bill uh, and even the B would not be passed without further changes. And so this is some of the areas that we worked on, and I want to make sure this is the ones I'm hearing the most. Um, so in terms of access to uh, put input in, Everybody had access. Some people used the access more. Some people used it less. But there were no meetings that people didn't know about. But we met and spoke to people individually, people who gave us feedback. We took that feedback uh, from all stakeholders. Just want to go over the time frame a little bit. Uh, we, in this version, go all the way out to September 2020. The first roughly six months till March, all anyone needs is OSHA 10. Everyone agrees that OSHA 10 is important, and we agree that a good framework is OSHA because everybody understands it, but everybody has the ability to get it. So by March of next year, everyone has to have OSHA 10. By the following six months, whatever that date is, everybody has to have OSHA 10 plus 20 hours. That 20 hours can be achieved by having OSHA 30 training. This is important because OSHA is the standard that everybody says they understand and realize why we need it. So all everyone has to have is OSHA 30. It's important to recognize that we were dealing with people who had issues with MWBE, day laborers, and local, particularly local hiring. We want to make sure we address that. So at any point in time after this bill is passed, all anyone has to have is OSHA 10 to get on a job site. They can work. Then they have six months to complete all of the rest of the training. That is important. And the last third, oh, by the way, we wanted to make sure that capacity wasn't an issue. So if for that second time period, DOB does an assessment and does an official assessment that says there's not capacity, they could extend that time period another six months, which can 
be another year. The third one is going to be decided by the task force. And they are going to decide between 10 and 25 hours additional. We are not the experts. So we took what everybody said about OSHA, we concretized that, and we decided to put the experts to work to decide on what the next 10 to 25 should be. That task force will be made up of all of the voices that we heard for, day laborers, unaffiliated workers, union, non-union, MWBE. All of those voices will be on that task force to make uh, those decisions. And that third timeline, we've allowed DOB again to say, if there's not capacity to achieve that third timeline, we can extend it again. Uh, it's either another six to nine months, which gets us to 2020. Also for capacity, we're creating, we're saying OSHA 10, OSHA 30, or OSHA 10, OSHA equivalent. The equivalent part is important because we know that OSHA only allows 40 people in the classroom. DOB is going to be allowing for OSHA equivalent, which, which for intended purposes will be the same, except we would allow more than 40 people in the classroom. And anybody who is giving OSHA training now will have the ability to give the OSHA equivalent classes. So there's no more loopholes, uh, there's only no more hurdles that people uh, have to go through. We have tried very hard to address everything that everyone spoke about. I think that we really have. Um, there also will be a mandated separate training facility, se se sorry, not facility, separate training that will be created uh, by the city that has to be created by March 18th to help provide trainings for people at free or low cost. The last piece of the capacity for me had to do with funding. And uh, I had said and made clear that even if this bill is aged, I would pull the bill, not vote on the bill, if there wasn't a very real commitment to make sure that this is not an unfunded mandate. So I'm happy now that very shortly we'll be announcing a commitment of $5 million uh, to be given to uh, some to the city, but a large portion to community groups who currently right now provide the type of trainings that we're talking about to the people we are most worried about for free and low cost. Uh, that $5 million will be between the uh, council and the mayor to make sure it gets not just to big organizations like CUNY, but to local groups who are providing the service right now. There will be also through and that should be done within uh, the next few months. It was called the November plan. In January, we're expecting three to six million dollars to be given to DOB as a beginning, so they have the capacity that's needed uh, to do this. We have made significant adjustments based on all the things that we heard from MWB to day laborers to non-unions to unions. I read the editorials of the Daily News and the Post. I'm not surprised that they misrepresented the bill. Uh, Post is unique in how they lie about bills. Usually I try to see where they are and I go the opposite way. So if the Post is saying I'm doing something bad, I'm probably doing something good. Uh, but both the Daily News and the Post uh, have opposed uh, bills that I've had before, particularly the Community Safety Act. One of them, thankfully, years later said they were wrong. I suggest uh, that they get another we were wrong letter uh, or editorial to put out because they're wrong on this as well. Uh, I do want to thank my uh, co-sponsor, Council Member Carlos Menchaca, also uh, Borough President Gail Brewer, and I want to include staff who helped assemble this, including Mike Toomey, my Legislative Director Megan Chen, Guillermo Patino, Council to the Committee Jose Conde, Policy Analyst uh, Sarah Gasolum, the Committee's Finance Analyst. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Megan Chen, who took the brunt of many people's choice words and when trying to communicate uh, what they thought. I want to also thank Jeff Baker and Laura Popa and a big shout out uh, to Ed Atkin who really helped uh, drive this thing home. I'm going to remain after because I know that some people um, still have questions. I want to make sure I answer those questions. I said this to my colleagues at DEM conference. If there's an issue that's brought up that somehow we hadn't thought about or is an otherwise a big issue that we missed, I am not adverse, and I spoke to Councilman Machaca, to pulling this bill. But we're not going to just keep going on and on for no reason. We want every issue that was brought to me, I made sure it was addressed in a very real way. If there are other issues, I sincerely want to hear them. 
but they have to be real. I know a lot of people are worried and concerned, as people usually are with this bill, and I want to validate that, and I want to make it real. But you have to be able to point out in the bill where the problem is so that I can address it. The only other thing that will make me uh, pull this bill is if this funding is not official, on paper, and committed. With that, I want to say thank you, and I want to ask the clerk to please call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on housing and buildings. All items are coupled. Chair Williams. I vote aye. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Sure. So um, I have a prepared statement and just some stuff that I'd like to say from my heart. But the prepared statement is I've witnessed the disproportionate impact of well-intentioned bills on communities of color. I think more dialogue and a much deeper dive is required before implementation of the legislation. The importance of safety on construction sites is of paramount importance to me in particular, as I'm acutely aware that a number of these deaths were minority workers. However, I believe that we can walk and chew gum at the same time, so we should do that. I'd like for us to take, a, take more time to clarify how many minority workers this critical construction, uh, these critical construction jobs and receive this important training so that they can move into the middle class. I applaud the goal of improving worker safety, but I believe that the rapid pace of advancing it uh, may provide unintended consequences, especially for MWBE businesses. The new training requirements may hurt new M MWBE businesses that, have, that are already facing, facing significant barriers of entry into the construction industry. This is why I have reservations uh, for the bill. I'd like to see, again, more dialogue and more input from MW the MWBE community. Uh, and on that, I vote aye. Espinel. I vote aye. Levine. Vote aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Torres. I vote aye. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. By vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. So um, I just want to thank my uh, colleagues, and I, I unfortunately, I'm sorry I did this. I want to make sure we lift up all of the construction workers who lost their life in this city on construction site. And the, if we can just have a moment, please. <laughs> I want to make sure we lift up all of the construction workers, both union and non-union, who lost their lives in this city. And it's important that we keep them lifted because this was the impetus of the bill. And since we started hearing this bill, I believe it's upwards of 40 people who have died. I don't believe that there are any other industry that that would have happened and would have taken so long to get something like this done. And I understand the difficulties of it, but that really was an impetus. And there was a lot of people who did not want to address this, who ran the other way. Uh, I'm proud that this council uh, did their best not to do that. Uh, as someone mentioned we were juggling fire and knives at the same time. Uh, but for me, it was extremely important because people should not just be dying while political machinations are going on. So I just want to say thank you again. I am going to remain uh, for anybody that has additional questions about the bill. I'm happy to answer them. And again, we can. Okay. And then, and again, if there is something that we have not thought about, I am not averse to pulling the bill. Uh, but it has to be real because we really took painstaking efforts to address all of the concerns uh, that we had. I'm going to leave the vote open for 3.30 for any additional votes. Thank you.